This tutorial is going to be about how we can get high resolution soft body deformations into Unreal and still keep performance really high. To do this, we're going to use something in Unreal called World Position Offset. In Houdini, it's called Vertex Animated Textures. Coming from visual effects, this was something that was a really new concept for me. What it allows you to do is inside your game engine, in your material, you can move your mesh. I was always curious when I saw demos of Unreal and how they could get every blade of grass or leaves in every tree moving in these big open world scenes. Red, green, and blue will correspond to X, Y, and Z. And so if I type in 100 units of red, that will move it 100 units in X. And if I give it a red value of 1000, that'll move it 1000 units in X. So what we can do is we can take our motion in Houdini and make a texture that's going to store all the animation values on it. Now in order for this to work, we have to download and install the Side Effects Labs tools. This is a free set of tools. You can find more resources about it on the Side Effects Art Station page. The Labs tools are updated constantly, and there are instructions on the Side Effects website on how to install it. We're going to go into Houdini, and we're going to do a really basic example just with a piece of cloth. I'm going to drop down a grid, and after that, I'm going to connect it to a remesh node just to give it more points. So it's a denser mesh, so our cloth will have more detail. Now I'm going to drop down a vellum configure cloth node, and we're going to keep everything with the default settings. And after that, I can just plug it into a vellum solver node. Once the vellum solver node is connected to the cloth, I can connect a sphere to be the collision object. When I run the simulation, we'll see that it will collide with the sphere. This is a relatively low resolution simulation, but you can see that I'm getting nice folds in the fabric. We're going to limit this to 100 frames. Once that's done, I can drop down a vellum post process node. Vellum post process allows me to subdivide it after the simulation. I turned on detangle, but I found out that that's not really going to do anything in this case. Then I turned on extrude by thickness, which means that now the mesh will have some thickness to it. It's not going to be just a zero thickness mesh. Now once that's done and I'm happy with how it looks, then I have to export it for Unreal. I'll drop down a null and label it to mark the end of this network. Next, I'll drop down my vertex animation texture node in the out context. You really only have to do a couple of things. There are a lot of settings, but we won't need to change much. I have to connect it to the geometry that I'm going to be using There are different presets that you can use, and in this case, I'm going to use soft body deformations. I'm going to make sure that the EXR that it's going to be output to is going to be a high dynamic range EXR. It's going to automatically save the files to the same directory where I saved my HIP file. If you're new to Houdini and unfamiliar with the term HIP file, it's referring to your project file. So it's just going to save our textures and geometry to the same directory as where our project is stored. You can configure the output textures for either Unreal Engine or Unity. I'm going to hit Render All. Just so you know, the first time I did this, it failed because I said that the texture resolution was only going to be around 1024. And I need it to be a lot bigger because of my dense geometry. So I'm changing it now to a 4K image, and then I'm going to process it again. It creates these crazy textures that are quite large but every pixel is going to correspond with some position information and some rotation information that Unreal can use in its world position offset material settings. It's also going to give you an FBX file, but it's just the first frame of the animation. It will be a big file because my geometry is so dense, but it won't contain any animation. Now you have to install the Side Effects Labs plugins into Unreal. In the Vertex Animation Texture node, there's a button that you can press It'll take you to where Houdini keeps the Unreal plugin and a few instructional text files. If you open up the plugin installation guide, it'll tell you exactly where you have to drag and drop that folder. You just put it into your plugins folder in Unreal, and then you should be good to go. So inside of Unreal, if you go to plugins, look up side effects, and you'll see the side effects labs plugin that you can use. Select that and restart Unreal. 
When you open it up again, you'll have access to the tools that you're going to need in order to do this. I'm going to load in the FBX, and there are certain settings you need to tweak, and this is explained in the text file. In that text file, it says you have to turn off all the toggles. I missed a few when I did this, but you'll see that when I go through. And then just basically go through the instructions in the file. The vertex color import option should be set to replace. The transform vertex absolute should be on. I don't have any LODs, so I don't need to bother with those. Normal import method should be set to import normals and tangents. Import uniform scale should be set to one. Convert scenes should be set to on. Override full name is on. Material import method should be set to do not create material. Reorder material to FBX order should be on. Once that's done, you can bring in the textures. The textures need to have specific settings applied to them. If you right click on them and you go to scripted asset actions, you're going to see side effects, set vertex, animation textures, HDR textures. So when you do that, that's just going to set the settings on the textures to the correct setting. If you hit Control S to save and you hover over top of your textures, if you look under filter, it should be set to nearest. If that's set to nearest, then you're good and all the other texture settings should be set correctly as well. So now I'm going to bring the mesh into the scene. You have to set up a material in order for this to work. So I'm going to make a material and inside it, the node you want to bring in is side effects, soft body deformations. Once that's brought in, you'll see that there's a bunch of inputs and outputs, but you don't have to connect them all. We connect the normal output to where it says tangent space normal. Connect the world position offset output to the world position offset input. On the material, search for tangent and turn off tangent space normal. We'll need to make some extra UV inputs. Click on the material and search for UV and you'll find that you can bring up the number of customized UVs that you want. Put in five and you, you leave the first one blank and you just connect one, two, three, four. Once that's done, I'm just putting a color on it, uh, connecting it, and then I'm going to save out my material. Then right click and select Material Instance. On Material Instance, it's going to give us a different interface, but a much more friendlier interface for us to use. Here's where you drag and drop the position texture and the rotation textures. Once that's done, you can see the mesh moving, but it's going to look kind of crazy. When you're using large textures, you have to open up the window for the mesh properties, look up UVs, and turn on Use Full Precision UVs. And just make sure to scroll down a little bit and click on Apply Changes. You should see that now the mesh will behave properly. Lighting is not going to work properly because it doesn't take the world position offset into account by default. Go and look up Offset in the Details panel and turn off Evaluate World Position Offset. And now the lighting should be behaving the way we would expect. You'll notice that the animation is going to be looping by default. So now we have to prepare the mesh for Sequencer. If you go back to the Material Instance, set the playback speed to 1 and the Houdini FPS to 24. Turn on Interpolate Footage so it'll be able to create subframe information and then go to Auto Playback and turn it off, and go to Display Frame and turn that on. We have to build a control to set the current frame and sequencer. I'm going to create a sequence, and I need to make the control to animate it. So go to our material and create a Material Parameter Collection. Double click on it to open that up, and we want to create a scalar parameter. This is going to be the frame number. We're going to expand this and call it frame number. Give it a default value of 1 and click Save. Go back to your material and drag and drop the material parameter collection that we just created. Make sure that you select the parameter that you want to use, so frame number, and then pipe that into the display frame override. 
Now, that parameter can be animated in Sequencer. Go to Add a Track, and we want to add in a Material Parameter Collection Track. Select the name of it, which in my case I called VAT Cloth. And now you can just dial in the frame number you want. I'm going to go to frame 1, and I'm going to have my last frame be frame 100. And make sure you set the interpolation to linear. And now when I play back, it plays back. That's our simple setup. Excuse the bad lighting. So now I'm going to walk through a more complex example. I'm going to go through this quickly because I explained it in detail in my last tutorial. The link to my last tutorial is in the video's description. I imported the skeletal mesh from Unreal and I brought in the animation and I brought them into a bone deform node. So here I can see the animation, but it doesn't have the skirt. The skirt I had to export out of Unreal by making it a static mesh. Then I have to unpack it in Houdini, and then I'm going to remove the default material that Houdini throws on it. Then I'm deleting everything but the skirt. The skirt has a cut in it, and so this chunk of nodes over here, I'm just separating out the cut so that it's not overlapping. So now it has that opening, and I'm subdividing it. Anything that's new from the previous tutorial is going to be a pink node. I'm deleting the inside faces because we don't need that for the simulation, and it will just slow it down. The next part is getting the skirt into the attack position. Right now the skirt is in the A pose position, and that's not the same position as it is when he's in his attack pose. I'm blending between those two poses, and the cloth will simulate moving into the attack pose. You can see that now the sim is much slower than before, because it's just a way heavier, denser mesh. It takes several seconds before it goes to the next frame. And this part is I'm just showing how I'm blending from the A pose into the attack pose. I ran this sim for about 122 frames until it's in the attack pose and the cloth has settled and then I use a stash node to store the geometry into the hip file. I did add a peak node here, which is expanding out the character, and that's just to push the cloth outward so it doesn't accidentally simulate the cloth into the character. So I just set up the nodes for the simulation, and this is where I cached it out because it was such a heavy sim. It was saving it as it went. And now you can see it's a heavy mesh, but now I get all the nice folds in the fabric. I'm going to do a vellum post process, and looking back on it now, I, I didn't need this node. I thought at the time I should try to detangle anything, but that's not going to do anything here uh, because I'm going to deform the original mesh with a point deform. Now I'm just connecting it back to the original mesh with the point deform, and I can see it's looking nice, and I can test that out here. I did add in a soft transform, just grabbing a chunk of the mesh before it was animated and pulling it in just a little bit because I could see that here the skirt was intersecting the character. So I'm just pulling it in slightly. Uh, it was enough that when the animation is applied, it no longer intersects. So I'm just showing that over here by turning it on and off. You can see how that part of the skirt is being tucked underneath the belt. And then I'm deleting any extra attributes that I don't need, and that's going to be the output for what I'm going to save using Vertex Animated Textures. I'm going to go to my output, and there is the Vertex Animation Textures output node. You can see that the target texture size is 4K, and everything else is pretty much the default settings. If I go into Unreal, here's what I was showing at the beginning of the video. I have the high res and the low res skirts that you can see the difference between the two. So you can see all the folds on the left. On the right hand side, it's a much simpler mesh. It's up to you to decide whether it's actually worth it or not to go through all this bother. Uh, but there it is, and the performance is still quite good. You can see here it's rendered, and you can see the difference between the two, just with the skirts on their own, and you can see how it looks. I hope you found this useful.